How is the education system in the West indoctrinating our youths? Is the enforced teaching of dogmatic, immoral sexuality being imposed on our young people? Is it going to become compulsory for our children to be taught explicit sex education in the UK? Assalamu alaikum, my name is Mubafar Haidar and this is The Machinations. In the studio today we have sister Zainab Thani, school teacher and mother of three, to share some examples of uh, children's books being used in schools. Assalamu alaikum. Just a few examples. We have here a brand new edition of the modern classic, but instead of the traditional family being presented for our youth, we actually find the title Heather has two mums pushing to normalise lesbianism for children. It's colourful, it's bright, it's got cheerful faces, all the things that attract children. Uh, sometimes the agenda of such children's books is not as obvious. So like in this example, uh, introducing Teddy, a uh, story about being yourself, the LGBT agenda is being pushed through such slogans, it's all about being yourself, it's all about being comfortable in whatever you choose, uh, which all sounds nice, but it's actually the very same dogma, simply sugar-coated. And you'll see what I mean when you open the book. It says, Thomas the Teddy took a deep breath. I need to be myself in my heart. I've always known that I'm a girl Teddy, not a boy Teddy. I wish my name was Tilly, not Thomas. Yeah, so you can see that the idea of same-sex relationships and also gender identity is being pushed to uh, very young children. A family can be made up in many different ways. It's called Soji, for sexual orientation and gender identification, a curriculum that teaches public school students across Canada to celebrate the homosexual lifestyle and that gender is fluid. It's okay to be gay. We are different. This is my best friend Teddy, and today we're going to talk about gender. I thought only boys have short hair and wear ties. If they want, girls can have short hair or long hair, or wear tiaras, or bow ties. And these kinds of sentiments are being pushed to young kids in the West, but also around the world. And another example is, and tango makes three. So if you saw this book, you'd think it's perfectly innocent. You might even give it to your child to read. Inside it says, Roy and Silo taught Tango how to sing for them when she was hungry. They fed her food from their beaks. They snuggled her in their nest at night. And then it goes on to say, Tango was the very first penguin in the zoo to have two daddies. So it's presenting gay people posing as parents as something sweet, snuggly, loving and nurturing to children as young as three. And another example is, well, Jazz always knew she was different from other kids. She had a girl's brain and a boy's body. This is her story. I have a girl brain, but a boy body. This is called transgender. I was born this way. And such sentiments are not limited to children's books, but are also perpetuated throughout the mainstream media, ensuring that youths will be immersed throughout their teenage and young adult lives I was born this way, for example. Born this way is actually the title of a Lady Gaga song. This music video in particular is rampant with sexual imagery, shamelessly explicit iconography. It was nominated for Kids' Choice Award for Favourite Song. A portion of the money earned from sales of the uh, Country Road version went to the Gay, Lesbian and Straight Education Network, United States-based education organisation working to create uh, safe and inclusive K-12 schools. The Washington Post stated that Born This Way was a hymn for LGBT Christians. The point is, this kind of uh, sexually explicit music which seeks to blur the lines between males and females would never be accepted by the common mind because it's just so bizarre unless 
Uh, background indoctrination was done to them while they were younger. School books like these are providing precisely that. Thank you, brother. A couple more examples that Dr. Kate has provided. So this one says, when I was very little, and mum would say, you're such a good boy, I would say, no, mama, good girl. So this one is titled King and King, again promoting the gay agenda to children. And you can see inside that the two men see each other with love hearts flying between them and they both say, what a wonderful prince. The wedding was very special too. The queens even shed a tear or two. I've even heard in many schools they're now making the uniform policy unisex so children can wear what they want. So that means boys wearing dresses. We here have Jacob's new dress which seeks to normalise boys wearing dresses. And you can see Jacob running, perfectly happy, wearing a dress. My younger brother, I remember when he was very young, maybe like five or something, he didn't know the difference between men, men and women. Uh, he, didn't, he, just, he thought that if somebody has long hair, that is what makes them a woman. And if somebody has short hair, that's what makes them a man. Uh, and this is actually backed up by uh, Kohlberg's gender constancy theory, which argues that before the age of seven, children don't understand that if a man wears a dress, he is still a man underneath. So by teaching young children to question their own gender and potentially send them off down the route of gender reassignment, this surely amounts to state-sanctioned child abuse. And this is what child development and psychology professionals are also saying. At the very least, teaching such concepts will seriously damage the child's mind. I had one little boy, a patient we'll call Andy. Between the ages of three and five, he increasingly played with girls and stereotypical girl toys and started saying he was a girl. I referred the parents and Andy to a therapist. Sometimes mental illness of a parent or abuse of the child are factors. But more commonly, the child has misperceived family dynamics and internalized a false belief. In the middle of one session, Andy put down the toy truck and held onto the Barbie and said, Mommy and Daddy, you don't love me when I'm a boy. What the therapist learned is that when Andy was three, his sister with special needs was born. She required significantly more of his parents' care and attention. Andy misperceived this as, mommy and daddy love girls. If I want them to love me again, I have to be a girl. With family therapy, Andy got better. Today, Andy's parents would be told something quite different. They would hear, this is who Andy really is. You must change his name, ensure that everyone treats him as a girl, or else he will commit suicide. As Andy would approach puberty, the experts would put him on puberty blockers so that he could continue to impersonate a girl. Experts assure us it doesn't matter that we've never tested puberty blockers in biologically normal children. It doesn't matter that when blockers are used to treat prostate cancer in men and gynecologic problems in women, that they cause problems with memory. We don't need testing. No, we need to arrest his physical development now or he'll commit suicide. But this is not true. Instead, when supported in their biological sex through natural puberty, the vast majority of gender-confused children get better. Yet, we are chemically castrating gender-confused children with puberty blockers. Then, we permanently sterilize many of them by adding cross-sex hormones. Cross-sex hormones are estrogen and testosterone. Those put young children at risk for heart disease, strokes, diabetes, cancers, and even the very emotional problems that experts claim to be preventing. P.S. If a girl who insists she is a man has been on testosterone daily for one year, she's cleared to get a bilateral mastectomy at age 16. Now mind you, the American Academy of Pediatrics recently came out with a report that urges pediatricians to caution teenagers about getting tattoos because tattoos are essentially permanent and can cause scarring. But this same AAP is 110% in support of 16-year-old girls getting a double mastectomy, even without parental consent, so long as the girl insists that she is a man and has been taking testosterone daily for one year. 
Let's be clear, to indoctrinate all children from preschool forward with the lie that they could be trapped in the wrong body disrupts the very foundation of a child's reality testing. If a child can't trust the reality of their physical bodies, who or what can they trust? Transgender ideology in schools is psychological abuse that often leads to chemical castration, sterilization, and surgical mutilation. If that's not child abuse, ladies and gentlemen, what is? Uh, this series is based on the research of Dr. Kate Godfrey Fawcett, and she's striving very hard to raise awareness about this new sexuality curriculum, as well as support parents regarding what they can do to help safeguard their children. Uh, she reached out to us at Islamic Pulse, so together we can awaken you to what is really going on. This series will aim to explore what the new sexuality education movement means for our children and for society, what it will involve and the impact it will have on their well-being. We will examine the context and bigger agenda within which sex education sits. But just to give you a brief overview, it is a global movement that has the backing of international bodies such as the United Nations who are intent on implementing what is known as comprehensive sexuality education into every school in every country worldwide by 2030, whether they like it or not. It also has the backing from NGOs, powerful lobbies, the media, and the world's most powerful elites. In 2020, it is going to be made mandatory in England for relationship education to be taught in all primary schools in relationship and sex education, RSE, to be taught in all secondary schools, whether state, academy, private or faith. This applies to all schools, doesn't matter if it's a Catholic school, an Islamic school, state school, it doesn't matter. The curriculum is to be introduced and taught to children from as young as four years. Many of the resources that have been produced and are recommended for the teaching of RE or RSE include uh, exposing young children to graphic cartoon porn and concepts that young minds should not be exposed to in any way. So this is precisely what's happening. The media and education systems of the West are interlocked. People are unwittingly consuming media in the name of entertainment or education, and they're gradually being indoctrinated to think and behave in a certain way. People in the West are often the first people to believe that they're living in an open and free society, where they're allowed to think and feel however they want. And it's precisely this belief which makes them so vulnerable to indoctrination. So if you can't see the prison bars, why would you even try and escape? Stay tuned for more, inshallah. Let me tell you about Jonas. Jonas is 19 years old. Jonas is a pedophile. Are the powers that be enforcing the idea that children are sexual from birth? The aim of sexuality education are to deconstruct and change the sexual and gender norms of society. You may find some of these learning objectives shocking. Learning objectives for level 1, ages 5 to 8. Girls and boys have private body parts that can feel pleasurable when touched by oneself. Bodies can feel good when touched. 